Hello, good morning, and welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne, disembodied voice, John, and a squeaky ball, Kiri, who squeaked just for you. Just a few squeaks I got out of her this morning. Good morning, sweetie. Oh, no, and then she lost her ball. Okay, one moment. <laughs> this is an emergency. <laughs> I think she finally killed one, guys. We do go through a bag of three, like, every few months. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you all today? It is, uh, it's one of those, one of those days. <laughs> I keep feeling, do you ever have, like, a week where you keep trying to get good sleep and, like, it just evades you? Like, it completely evades you. It's just like, nope. I feel like it's like that for this week for me. Ah, yeah, the, yeah, the squeaky ball being lost under the chair is definitely an emergency. Definitely. Of the, of the, the highest order of emergency. <laughs> All right, guys, I need your input. Yeah, second Monday of the week. It's, it's a Monday with a capital M, I think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, not label it that, uh, definitely weird, because I really want it to be better than that. So I'm, I'm actually, I, I think this Monday has a potential to actually be a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how my week is going. Just trying to troubleshoot why I'm not sleeping great. Fun. And I'm somebody who, like, David can get away with less sleep than I can. Like, I need more sleep than he does for some reason. You know, everybody needs a different amount. And I, like, there's definitely a threshold for me. Ah, and I, and I haven't even been playing WoW for the last two nights. Like, I haven't touched WoW for two days because I've been working on painting stuff instead. So it's just like, eh? I don't know. What you gonna do, right? Sometimes you just have to deal with it and go on. It is Tuesday. It's the second Monday of the week, as Daffodil likes to say. <laughs> All right, guys, I need your input. Input, input, input. All right, so let's take a look at our cat book room because we need to know what fur color we're doing. Um, no, it's not a teal cat folk. I'm sorry. All right, so let's take a look at, at uh, Shadow Eyes here. Shadow Eyes has... Looks like some boiled leather plates, I'm going to say, because all this stuff probably isn't metal because it's, she's a, he or she, she, she's a rogue. Um, let's get close to her and zoom in. Let's take a look at her. The first thing you want to know is, uh, is what her fur texture is like, because that's going to, uh, well, Shadow Raven, the problem with that is, all right, so if we look at her, she actually has very little fur showing. She has a little bit of fur showing on her arms, just a tiny bit. 
She has her head. She does have her tail. She does have the back of the legs, but that's not as useful to us. Because if you rem if you uh, think about cat patterns, you know that on the back of the legs, the pattern fades out. Like, it usually just goes to a paler color. Uh, unless the cat is dark, then it's just, like, bland. Um, so, when you choose a pattern, you can't just shout it out. Because it's, like, how much fur is actually showing is going to determine whether you can even carry off that pattern. So, like, based on this, white tiger, like, tiger would work for the face. So you have to choose, essentially, a pattern that you can carry off just on the face, on this model. Because you look at her, she has almost no spots showing anywhere else. Now, her fur texture is milder than I thought at first, so we can actually do, like, we could actually get away with a couple of stripes on her legs here. Um, so, tiger would work. Leopard, I'm going to say, wouldn't because the, there's not a lot of room for spots and the, the fur is a little long for spots. You know how when you look at a Persian that's got a pattern and, the, and everything is kind of faded out and diffused because of all the fluff and a short-coated cat shows a pattern more? That's what we're talking about here. So Siamese works great uh, almost on almost every cat and this one works because the feet are uh, open. So yeah, you could carry off a Siamese of various sorts because you'd have the, the lighter legs and the darker feet. And, of course, the face mask. So we could do tiger. We could do Siamese. But when you're thinking about patterns, like, do think about that. Think about, like, how much area is actually showing and would I actually be able to paint the pattern on that? Like, any cat, Siamese, like, the tail would show. Um, obviously, a Siamese, the back of the leg would show really great. So you'd be able to see the fades. So that would carry pretty well, actually. Um, but, uh... Calico Lady Doggo, I don't think this is the cat for a calico. Because calico is a pattern that's randomized and relies on large spots of color, um, it would be extremely hard to do it on something this small. Uh, or at this month, I should say, not necessarily as small, but if, if this character had more fur showing, we could absolutely do it. But because she's covered in armor and stuff... Um, it would be really hard to make a calico pattern work. Like, you could do, like, the kind of the half black face with the orange spot or whatever, but then the other, the rest of it, it wouldn't show up really anywhere else except maybe the tail. So you could do calico on this. Um, it just wouldn't be as much fun as doing it on a character that had more fur showing. Leopard wouldn't work, Val, because you, you've got no area to show it. Like, you, uh, leopards start also with pretty small spots, on the face so you'd be able to get the spots and the color but then you'd lose it like you you really don't have a lot of space here to do spots you gotta ask yourself again how much room do i have to convey a pattern um you could convey it on here but when a pattern when a leopard pattern gets to the back of a cat it turns to stripes on the tail so yeah we could do it black cat any solid colored cat is easy black or um i mean black makes sense for a rogue but, uh, I like blue point Siamese, too. I had a blue point. I owned a blue point and a seal point in my life. Um, so I think John is probably going to have to put up a poll on this. Are you ready, John? John has abandoned us. Ah, it's already up. There we go. It's already up. <laughs> All right. How, what, what options did you choose? Have you got? Um, I was listening with? the whole time, so I got tabby, tiger variant, Siamese, solid color slash black, and then some kind of point. Okay. Um, so it's, yeah. So that that would be kind of Siamese, but I mean the different colored pointed. Yeah. <laughs> so so we'll uh, if we get if Siamese gets voted up, we'll decide what color of Siamese to do. Okay. Because they've got some several different very pretty colors. We also have to think about at that point that then at any of this, uh, no matter what you guys vote up, we have to decide on a fur color, like I said, a variant of tabby or Siamese or whatever you're doing. Um, or, and then we have to decide on the colors for the rest of the model because they have to work with that fur color. So that's the challenge, right? Black is the easiest there because uh, any, you know, any color works with black. It's a neutral. So I'm watching this poll. Come on, guys. Give me a poll. I'll get, in the meantime, I'll get some colors out of my palette because I know I'm going to want some walnut and some white. So I'll start mixing those while you guys vote on what we're going to do today. I don't know if a white cat really would be a rogue. Like, they might be like, yeah, I'm sneaky, but I think I'll go bard. <laughs> 
because it's just like like setting yourself up to fail, right? They'd have to black their fur all the time, and I don't know that any cat, any self-respecting cat, would do that. Um, they'd dye their fur, maybe. That would be just a pain in the butt, though. I, th I think that it, I would give a white cat credit and have them, they would choose some other kind of roguely thing that was not quite rogue. No, dragon, I never prime my bones minis. I always just wash them, and then I paint directly onto the model. Um, yeah, John David, sometimes I'll use, if I want a more subtle brown that's not as strong that I don't have to fight, um, I'll, uh, I'll use, uh, brown liner instead, but I'll always use some sort of dark brown for lining, um, and for shading. I don't like using pure black because it, it uh, mixes weirdly with some colors. Hold on, I'm going to minimize our, minimize our poll so that I can, uh, talk to you guys. Freestyle, we already have uh, we already have a poll up, so vote in the poll. We're not going to take new things for the poll at this point. I'm sure that if you guys really like these cat folk, that I can find another one to paint at someone. Hey, Cory Noob, it's good to see that a more new people are coming in. Yeah, yeah. Usually, uh, usually I have a paint scheme in mind, um, Cory, but today because cats can be so much fun and because there's so many different patterns, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what patterns you could really do on this model because it doesn't have much fur showing. So, yeah, I figured I'd let the chat choose. Siamese one. All right, so now we just have to figure out, um, uh, what is, is there a good ratio? Um, the wash medium shake very well, but in general, uh, what I usually use the wash medium is about six drops to one, depending, Star Wars Geek. If, it's, if you're doing uh, like a, a liner, like if you're doing a brown liner wash, the liners are a little more transparent. You could get away with less medium. Um, but six to one gives you a nice big puddle of wash to use. If you're doing a tiny, tiny little bit of wash, then I would just do a little smear of paint and maybe do two or three drops of wash and just kind of tune it. Um, but you always want to try it like somewhere like on the base to make sure that it's working, um, at the right consistency for you, because it's really tunable, right? That's the great thing about the wash medium is it lets you tune the wash to exactly what you want. So, and you can also use it in our existing washes, which tend to be, uh, done a bit thick on purpose so you have the freedom to use them thicker or to thin them Kernigo, just pick up a book about cats or or do a search for cat colors and patterns on google that'll give you enough inspiration i can only do one cat here rogue doesn't mean just sneak thief dab dabber although this one uh this one has is pretty heavily armored. I'm I'm not sure. Like uh, she even has scale. I didn't think Rogue could have scale. I'm gonna paint this all like leather, and I think I'm gonna just paint that like fish scale leather. Like maybe she really likes fish, and so she wanted some fish scale armor. <laughs> Thanks, John David. You're welcome. All right, so we have Siamese. Um, so what kind of Siamese? We, uh, I, Tabby Point's not gonna work, Kurt and Kuridiko. Okay, so let's see here. Let's get, let's get. Remember, the, okay, fine, the finer the pattern, the harder it is, for one thing. It's not gonna show up on a very furry model. Um, hold on, let me see here. Let me look up Tabby Point and see. Maybe we can. But I remember them being pretty faded. Yeah. I mean, we could do it. It's mostly around the face. You're, the problem is that you're never going to see any of the tabby on the, um, like the front, the, the arms or anything. Like you're not going to see this marking at all. Remember? Cause there's armor all over it. The tail is really dark, but there is tabby ish. I mean, that's pretty. What do you guys think of that? Well, Siamese blue eyes is a given, right? So what do you guys think of that picture? We could probably carry this off. Like, I think I we have enough room to do the face markings. And I really like the blue eyes and the pink nose. And I think we can definitely carry off the tail. Um, and it's actually not... I don't think that one's a seal point. I think it's... It looks a little bit... I don't know. It's hard to tell. Maybe. And when it gets washed out like that, it's really hard. The other reason I like this photo... Um, 
is that it gets it's high res so we can get in close you like that all right so unfortunately yes this does mean that our our roguish cat does have a lot of uh a lot of uh, white on her. So maybe that's why she wears a lot of armor. <laughs> She's like, my face is darker, so I, and my tail is darker, and my feet are darker, so I can get away with that, uh, but I have to cover up all this white. Yeah, we just, everybody voted against the black, so. So yeah, okay, we will do this. We will do this kitty, and I'm gonna make sure that I've got that photo just up on my phone so I can refer to it. And that means we'll be starting with kind of a cream, right? So this is also fun for you guys because you get to uh, see the colors that we're going to be using. So um, let's see here. Creamy ivory is actually close. Like if you look at the cream color where the brown fades in, because she's got a lot of extra like white when the fur starts getting longer, it gets white, but that just means we highlight it. So I'm going to say creamy ivory. I'm going to say pure white. I'm going to say for that dark color, Walnut isn't warm enough. Oop. Walnut is not warm enough for that dark fur color. We need some more of a brown. I think more of a russet. Looks like russet brown to me. And maybe some brown liner for some... Uh, let me get my stuff out here. Brown liner. There. Need our russet. I think mixed with uh, creamy ivory, the russet brown is going to be okay. I might need to add a little bit more of a warmer brown. Um, pure white. I think brown liner is going to be pretty good for the tail. And I can mix in a little bit of the warmer brown. Something in me tells me that there's enough orange in that. I'm going to need harvest brown though. Hold on. Let me grab it. Harvest or, um, yeah, not that one. Is harvest going to be too much? It might be too much. I wonder if rich leather would work. Mm, too yellow. Yeah, I'll keep both around. So mixing that, that color is going to be a challenge. Oh, did, did we summon Julie? Yeah, we did. Hi, hi, Julie. Guess what we're painting today? Well, you can see your name up on the card, and now you see your little rogue. Um, so we're going to paint uh, Shadow Eyes the Rogue as a tabby point Siamese um, with darker points. So my my personal supposition, Julie, on this one is that her, she's mostly white, and so she totally is wearing armor to cover all that white fur. So yeah, yeah, you have a knack of showing up when I'm painting one of your minis, Julie. <laughs> Or I should say Bob and Julie, because it's both of you. All right, so we're going to start, when you're doing this, when you're doing a pattern, guys, you want to start with your ground color. So here we've got kind of a cream, which has some darkish, more warmer brown uh, in certain parts of the model. Probably I'll use that color in the shadows. Um, and then you want to cover the whole model with a slightly darker, even though the fur comes up to white, you never start with white. Always start with something darker because then it's easy to put in these little white strokes to get you more highlights. But you want to start with kind of a medium light ground color. So, doo -doo -doo. yes, Tuesdays. Ah, Tuesdays. I see. <laughs> Yeah, long fur can be a very, very challenging to do any any patterns on. So I'm gonna try to do a, a mix to see if I can nail that kind of caramely warm brown color on the kitty. We're gonna take Shadow Eyes's uh, card out of the frame for now, but it can always come back. So what I have right now is I've got walnut on one side, and uh, this may be one of the models I don't use walnut on. Although I may use it to line the armor, but in the fur I'm not gonna use walnut. Part of the reason for that is that walnut is very reddish and uh, this cat is more golden, has more yellow tones than red tones. So I'd use brown liner instead. Also, I'm looking for a more subtle pattern with this kitty, right? We want, we want it to kind of fade in nicely around the face, right? And around the tail, we want a nice fade effect here. And to do that, liner is better because it's a little bit more transparent. So it's going to make them uh, make things blend together a little bit easier. Now I'm going to try to mix this warm brown fur color and I'm going to actually use a mixture of two things. I'm going to use russet brown which is the equivalent of our burnt umber and I'm going to use harvest brown which is a really orange brown, one of the orangiest browns you could possibly use. Now this is very yellow, this is very orange. I'm hoping to get something in the middle to help us work on this warm brown area that I want to use for shadows. Um, 
So I'm going to do one drop just, uh, just to, so when you start mixing a color and you're really not sure, just use one drop of each, mix them together and see what you get. Then look at what you're trying to copy and see if uh, you're going in the right direction. Ah, that one, that was not mixed up well enough. Foolish. Yeah, but there's a better Khajiit. There's, there's, a, there's an actual kind of ripoff Khajiit bust that, um, uh, used to be part of origin art, but then when they went out, um, of, uh, business, uh, it got picked up by, uh, Black Sun. So if you look on Black Sun Red Links, they have an actual, like, cat folk bust that is definitely Khajiit, like, definitely has that, that style. Um, he's got a bone handle dagger. It's, he's pretty cool. I own him. David and I both own a copy because we really like him. Although David was never as into, uh, the Elder Scrolls as I was. All right, so we're going to mix these colors together. And it's going to look really, really intense at first. That's fine. Because remember, we're going to mix a little bit of our ground color into it. Yeah, cat folk are cool. Yeah, having read the background since I ordered Volo's Guide to Monsters, now having read a bit of the background of the tabaxi, I really like them. In my world, they'd, uh, in my world, the cat lord would probably be a, uh, like an avatar or a sub deity under the trickster god. All right, so now I'm going to mix in a, bar, a bit of that creamy ivory because then we're using it as a base coat and I'm using this to shade that fur. So what I want to do is both compare this color to the photo and also kind of uh, have that bit of creamy ivory in there so it's going to blend with creamy ivory really well. Uh, yeah, if I had him in it, I'd dig him out for you. But yeah, Black Sun, I think it's, they still have him. I was able to order him. Uh, I don't remember his name, sadly, the name of the bust, but... Uh, I was able to order one for David for our anniversary, so I hope it's still out there. But yeah, it is, uh, it's a sweet bust. It's a lot of cloth, though. A lot of folds, and the turban is cool. So if I do freehand on it, I'm going to be cussing. If I do freehand right. When I do freehand on it, I'm going to be cussing. Plus, I'll have to find some arabesque designs. All right, so we've got, I'm mixing my walnut anyway in case I want to line. Um, I've got this. I've got that. What I may do, yeah, looking at that brown liner, I think I want a little bit of warmth in it. Again, I want these things to blend together, right? So uh, since I used a little bit of the creamy ivory here, and I'm going to mix up some real cream, pure creamy ivory here, I'm going to actually take one of the colors from this, russet brown, and load it into my brown liner. This is going to make the brown liner cover a little bit better, but it's also going to make it um, a little bit softer, not as black. I want something that's going to work well. And I want something that's a little warmer. That worked all right, actually. I think one more drop. Because I still want it to be dark, so I still want to work with that. Uh... There's only Reaper Miniatures, Ed said so. That was not Ed's, uh, Ed's uh, say so when I started at the company. That's part of why I liked Reaper. Because it wasn't one of those companies. Because I had just come from working for Games Workshop, which was one of those companies. All right, there we go. So that's a little softer. I like that color. That's good. So here, let me put my uh, black base next to this. You guys can actually see what these colors look like. I know the white palette tends to wash things out. So one second. We'll get closer. Bring this down. Put some black next to it. Get a lot of our white out of frame. And uh, I'll bring some of this up onto the white. So what we've got now is, see, yeah, kind of a chocolatey brown color. So I think that's going to work well with this tan. And then, yeah, actually, well, well, it is Games Workshop's attitude, or at least it was when I worked there, John David. You weren't allowed to have of any model other than Games Workshop at, at work. Like, if you brought something in to show your friend, they'd tell you to put it away. So, so yeah, I don't like the, the kind of narrative there. It's, I've always, Ed is always considered, actually, now that now that we're on this, I, I believe that Ed is a very smart um, miniatures company leader for many reasons, but one of them is that Ed understands that the more miniatures companies there are, the better for all of us. Because then that gives a new person an, uh, more opportunities to find something that gets them into the hobby, right? To run across something that makes them pull the trigger and makes them get in the hobby and that benefits everybody because inevitably they won't stick with just the company they start with they'll start looking at other companies stuff too so yeah exactly which is a ref it's a refreshing uh mindset right because a lot of companies just don't have that mindset they've got the scarcity mindset which i think is very counterproductive 
It's not like anybody is going to spend less money. I mean, maybe like this week they'll spend less money on your product if they spend more money on somebody else's product. But if they like your product, they'll come to your product. The challenge on the company then is to produce a product that people like. All right, so there's our creamy ivory. Now, I'm going to look at our cat again. I might want that just a little warmer. Yeah, I do. So when I look at the kitty, we've got this color, but that's a little bit warmer. Like this is a little bit of a warmer cream and a little tiny bit darker. So what we can do again is remember our, our game is to make everything work together. So we can take a little bit of our brown here and mix it just a little bit. You don't want a lot. You just want to darken down that creamy ivory a tad. Make it a little bit closer to this. I don't want to put full drops of uh, like russet brown and intense brown into it. I just want to lower it a little bit. Now, hmm, I kind of like, that's about right actually, I think. That's good. It should mix now really well. Yeah, it's a pretty kitty. I mean, Siamese always have the greatest eyes, right? I, I do like the stark white markings around them, Jetta. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly, Chia, right? You start with one thing, and then it gets you into the hobby, and then you, you start looking at all sorts of awesome models. There's so many awesome models in the world right now. That's nice. Hey, Ty in Texas. I didn't know that. That's great. Like, Reaper is Reaper's just a really good, has a really good attitude about this stuff. Actually, you know what I need, though? I need a block. And right now, ah, right now my paint blocks are covered with commission models. So one moment while I pull a nasty commission model off of the paint block so I can put, put the cat rogue on it. There. Ha! There we go. Always put your banana block. Or, um, or a tube. Or a something. But I like these little blocks. They're pretty comfy. I used to use, I use pill bottles also. Um, I used to use old film canisters because nobody uses film canisters anymore. All right, so we're going to start out by painting everything with our ground color, which is the creamy color with just a little bit of brown in, brown in it. Hey, everybody. Let's see here. Um, okay, so Dragon Pink, let's talk about, oh, yay. Thanks, Graz. Thanks for that sub. 15 months, grats. So Dragon Pink, the reason that I tend to mix um, deeper puddles in here, I tend to put, use at least four drops of paint, and then I add water. It's quite a bit of water, usually. I usually go at least two to one, so I'm at about six drops of paint in here. So they're not going to dry out. Like, I could work on this for at least 45 minutes before I started to notice evaporation because I've got enough fluid in the wells. So the key here is to use more paint, not less. Don't just use one drop of paint. Don't just use two. You want to get to the point where your surface area is smaller and you've got a deeper puddle. That's why I use this particular palette, which has smaller wells and deeper wells. It keeps the paint wet longer. And if I've got a really thick color back here, like walnut, which I know my, I might not use right away, or maybe the shadow color here, I'll add an extra drop of water right up top, put it up to seven. I have a little less paint here, so I'm going to probably drop a drop of water in that because that was only three drops of paint. Now this one is in danger of drying out because it was only three drops of paint. Everybody else here should be peachy. Um, oh yeah, Chia, for sure. I mean, the hobby, everybody's a niche though. I mean, Games Workshop is the niche that most people see because it's big, right? It's very large and it's worldwide. But, and Reaper, Reaper has its niche of role-playing game stuff, right? Although I would argue that Reaper is big enough that when you get into the hobby, you do eventually stumble over Reaper. And really that's what matters, right? Is, is that you do find us. Um, it may take you a while, but it, you get here. <laughs> but yeah, so Dragon Pink, the key is to do bigger puddles because then I could go, like I would, I used to mix uh, when I went to Paint Club. Paint Club at Reaper was a four hour session. It was noon to four on Saturdays. I would get there, mix my paint and I would mix about eight drop eight drop wells. So I would start with like four or five drops of paint and I would go up to about eight drops, you know, three drops of water. It could be about eight drops of fluid. I could paint out of that palette for at least two hours before I started having to add more water. When you dip your brush in there and you notice the paint is a little sticky, that's the point where you want to add one extra drop of water um, and then just remix them. Like the key here is to notice when your paints are getting a little thick and catch them before they dry out if you need that color. Now, if you haven't touched that color in a couple hours of painting, chances are it's not a great loss if it goes away. You might have to remix it if it's like a color that you just haven't gotten to yet, right? So 
but this palette is great because it has the the i mean here let me put my, my finger in it so that's how big a well is you know just that's my my little finger um and it's pretty deep for that like it's the same depth of well as it as bigger palettes have but in a smaller area and what that does is limit the surface area that's exposed to the air which causes evaporation to slow down um, but you've got to be adding water to your paints to really take advantage of that. All right, let's get some paint on this and see if I have to put a little extra paint. Because um, I did thin down this uh, Creamy Ivory mix. So yeah, we're beating up a little bit. So I am going to add a little bit more paint. One second while I grab that color. Usually with the bones, I, I tend to go four to one on a base coat. But I'm in this habit of mixing a two to one. So you can see there, by the way, how we shifted the paint color a little bit by adding some of this brown. So I have to add a little bit more of this brown to make sure we go back down to where we want to be. I want it just a little bit darker. A little bit darker, a little bit warmer. Mixing a little bit of each of these into the other makes them work together. Um, if you're, I know there's a place to get one in Europe. If you're on my Patreon, I think they've actually shared where to get one. Um, but if you're in the USA or Canada, I think you can order from, uh, Cheap Joe's Art Supplies. If you do, um, I think it's supplies, explanation point supplies. It'll tell you, it'll give you a link. I think, I think that's the link. All right. So that is going to cover just fine. So yeah, about a four to one paint to water. Because I wash my bones, I find that I can get away with that pretty well. And yeah, even though the face will be darker, I will still start it with a light ground color. Especially because we're doing a tabby point where we have to do stripes and stuff. So I don't want a darker color solidly over the whole face. Little tiny face. Little kitty face. So I'm trying to keep paint from pooling anywhere big. But I am putting it on uh, fairly thick. I mean, considering that I've thinned it. It's still, this is like the verge. Like, this could be a little bit too thin still. It's a little watery, which is why it's not clinging awesome. So I may need to put an extra layer on. Just like with a regular miniature. This, this is the price of me thinning my paint too much in the beginning. Alrighty. Yeah, as long as it's not, there's a, there, are, there's a kind of a bad one out there somewhere. So just be, uh, be aware that there's one that's a little less easy to clean out there than the one that Cheap Joe's sells. I've heard mixed reviews on ones bought on Amazon that they're not porcelain. So I'm not sure which ones are good or bad, but just be aware. All right. I'm going to block in all of the fur just so I remember where it is. This is a furry shoulder, I think. Yes, it is a furry shoulder. All right. So we'll block in all of the areas that have fur and then we're going to start breaking down where our pattern goes and what we can actually do. And then if I have to put an extra coat on, since I used thinner paint on this, I may need to do that. There's a little shoulder pad there, but it's up high. So I'll be pretty careful when I first go over the model. Now, if you were doing this with an airbrush, you could easily just spray this color over the whole model. It's gonna act almost like an off-white primer um, because it is so close to white. So, I mean, you could easily paint all your leather colors and everything over the top. So I would probably do that if you were doing an airbrush on this. <laughs> Still feeling like my paint's just a little thin. Yeah, I am gonna, I'm gonna add one more drop. You just bought one. Lawrence Art Supplies. Thank you, Jetta. I knew that you guys had found uh, one in the UK, a vendor in the UK, so go on over there for that. There we go. Alrighty. 
hopefully that'll be thick enough. This is my fault for, for pre-thinning everything so much. Yeah, trouble, exactly, right? That's the beauty of it. It's like, as long as you're adding enough water out the gate to your paint, it will stay good for a very long time. And, it, you know, if you're used to kind of checking on your paint consistency in the well, like I said, when you go to dip your brush in and you notice that the paint around the edges is just a little tacky, that's when you add a drop of water and remix, and that'll keep you going. Like, no problem. There will come a point where there's diminishing returns, but I mean, like right now, I have, um, I've been painting these bases on these commission models, and uh, I need a certain selection of browns that I all hand mixed custom. So I have that palette shrink wrapped right now up on my shelf, and it's been shrink wrapped for two days. And every time I use it, you know, I check the consistency of the paints and maybe add a little water if necessary. And I also put drops of water in the wells around the colors so that there's more humidity under the shrink wrap um, to keep the paints wet. And uh, yeah, I just go with that. And uh, it'll probably stay good for a few days. You come to the point where the paint is just starts getting kind of wonky for being, you know, sitting wet for so long. But I can push it pretty, pretty hard. So I can keep it wet for many days. Well, if it dries fast, how many drops of paint are you using in it and how many drops of water are you adding, John David? Because if, if it dries way fast, then chances are you are not using enough paint or enough water. You want an actual puddle. If you're using less than three drops of paint, or three drops or less, I should say. Remember, if you want to use thicker paint, the well palette isn't as good for you. Use a wet palette if you want to use thicker paint. The, the palettes, the different kind of palettes have different abilities and they work well with different paint consistencies. So if you find that you don't want to thin your paint that much and that your paint is drying really fast in the well palette, go to the wet palette for those steps. I like to thin everything to within an inch of its life, so I tend to always use... All right. Not used to starting with such a pale coat. Also, I'm almost always uh, starting dark and going light, so it's really weird for me to start to do the opposite for this, but this is definitely a pattern that um, works that way. So, And I am going to base coat the paws in my pale color, even though I'm going to be painting them over. It'll just give them a more solid coat of paint. And the darker color will cover over the lighter color, no problem. Yes, don't worry about, yes, each bottle holds about 400 drops, so. Oof, a long day, yeah. Alrighty. Yeah, they're just like, you know, I washed this mini, but there's still like areas that it's like, I don't know if I want to hold paint, which is very silly. Usually I have no problems at all. I guess every once in a while you're going to run into that model. Or maybe I just didn't put enough soap in my water when I washed these guys. I'll find out when I wash the other ones from the same bunch. I did, uh, I did a couple at the same time. So if the Greek statues also repel paint, then I'll know it's me. Yeah. Um, it is, yeah, it is, Pendrake. I mean, okay. It is, it is key. If porcelain is the best because it's, it's got this glassy coating. Right, And this is what enables me to clean up my palette flawlessly after every session or close to it. If I spent more time, I could get it flawless. But I mean, this is why you use a ceramic palette. You don't use a metal. You don't use a plastic. Only the ceramic or porcelain is going to clean up this way. 
Everything else is going to stick to your palette and just build up in layers. That maybe you can deal with that. Some people can. They don't. They don't care. They'd rather just use the cheapo palette. But um, it bugs the heck out of me. And I find that I can't find a plastic palette with this size of uh, well. Touch-ups. I can be a little messy on this layer, although I tend to be neat no matter what. Uh, I have no idea. I thought Badger Stinal Res worked great on bones, John David. I just don't, I prefer not to. I don't, I don't use an airbrush, so, and I don't like brush on primers very much. So between the two of those things, I just avoid it. I just, I have found that I just need to put a layer of paint on the bones and I'm okay. I just don't need to prime them, so I don't. Many people disagree with me. So your mileage may vary and just make your own decision. Just have a reason for it, right? If priming the bones works great for you, then say, well, priming bones works great for me. I'm not going to hold it against anybody to prime their bones. I just don't do it. I mean, certainly you'd be, if I had primed this sucker, I would be getting a little less beating than I'm getting, but you know, it is what it is. Usually I don't see this amount of beating. That's why I think I maybe messed up my uh, dish soap ratio when I was washing my minis. Usually it works like a charm. Get this little bit, because I believe that is fur. Yeah, it is. And then we have to decide how we're going to color our fur. Yeah, I mean, it's sticking fine. Once I once I attacked the areas that were a little bit beating up with a little extra paint, um, it sticks. I mean, keep in mind also, I'm not handling the model as I paint it, John David. So as long as I've got a good coat, I mean, you can see I have a good coat. So as long as I've got a good coat, it's going to stick because I'm not like doing anything to rub it off. I'm not touching it. By the time I do touch the actual paint job, I'll have a lot more layers of paint on it. But yeah, like I said, it's, it's up to you what you want to do. Some people have great success priming bones and that's cool. Do it. Rock it. All right, did I miss a plate there? I can't decide if there's a plate there or not. There isn't on the other side, so I'm gonna say, ah, but it looks like there is one here. I don't know. We'll find out if it's just a fur or an artifact. I mean, a, a ceramic tile works, but you've got so much surface area open to, um, open to the air on that Nomad Zeke that it will dry fast no matter what you do. The, the advantage of the well is that it gives you that deeper pool where you limit the surface area, so that's where you're limiting the evaporation. That's why it works. Yeah, I mean, usually I would use just straight out of the bottle for the first coat, but I, I got myself into that, that horrible habit of thinning everything right up when I set it up. Just checking. Yes, it's a pale kitty for now but it won't stay a pale kitty. I just want to essentially lay down the, the base color of the fur before we start shading. All right, I need the hands. So yes, for all we said that a white cat shouldn't become a rogue, this kitty is uh, looking pretty pasty right now. That's okay, she'll darken up. Now, this is the opposite of the way I usually paint, right, guys? Where I usually go to start dark and work lighter, but or I'll start middle and work down and up. I am actually, believe it or not, this is a middle. This is, we are working, uh, starting in the middle to work down and up on this. It's just that the fur is so light in some areas that the mid-tone just makes us look like we're starting with a pasty kitty. You should all feel reassured to know that my base coat looks just as bad as yours. Yeah, that happens, Muses. 
Why I just don't. There's many reasons why I just don't. I do find that with plastic models, um, because there's not as much weight involved, the paint tends to stick better anyway. Now, if it's a gaming model and you're going to be handling it a lot, then I might uh, prime or start with uh, with a very heavy coat and, and maybe do some brush on sealer afterwards. But I mean... I've pretty much found that no matter what you do to a model, if you if you handle it a lot, it's going to rub off. So I've stopped sweating it so much. Now with metal and resin, I definitely do prime. No question there. And with plastic, that's not bones. So for everything except bones, I prime. Happily. All right. I think we're good. I need the inside of that leg. Yay, fur. All right, that is, I think, pretty solid. That's all armor. That's all armor. Well, this is actually, this is, that's actually, yeah, that's actually fur. It just didn't uh, translate that way, I think. Or, yeah, yeah, that's a rim. Okay, I see. I see what it is. Some of the fur texture just didn't come out on the back here in the mold, so. I did miss a fur spot that at first looked like a sleeve. So I was coming to kind of look at the front of the model and the back of the model and make sure all your stuff connects up, guys. All right. There. So Kitty looks pretty firmly base coated. I think I'm gonna go with it. Her top of her head needs a little help. There we go. All right, I think we're good. Normally what I would do now is line around the figure. Yeah, pretty much MCC. Morning Jelly, how's it going? And DM. Oh yeah, Vallejo is just not, you do need to thin Vallejo, yeah. I mean, and that's true of most paints today is they're working with thicker bases so that they get higher coverage. MSP is the exception. We are the only animal, the only breed of paint, to my knowledge. The scale 75 gets close, but they're still... Hmm... All right, cool. Now we need my kitty picture. I'll line as I work with the other fur sections. Okay, kitty. So the nose is going to be white, or the mouth area is going to be white. We've got a brown nose, brown to the top, brown kind of around the eyes. What I'll probably do is do everything in the, in the beige. This is really a little bit, I think I'd get a better color for this if I did a mix. Yeah, that's closer. So essentially, this or this this warm one, I probably am only going to use at the at the boundaries of things, because like this color is really warm, this color is really warm, but her nose, his or her nose, is more like this color that I just mixed, which is taking some of this dark and this uh, cream and mixing them together. So I think I'm going to start with this and introduce accents of the other stuff. Just pay attention to like um, how the colors build up. Like this color is very the same, very much the same as like this color here. And it goes up here, and then, then you get some warmer, darker browns as you start doing the patterns on the face. But if you look, other than around the eyes and the mouth, this kind of pale, mousy, um, gray-brown is the order of the day. So we're going to start with that. Uh, we'll start with that on her, every, pretty much every, everything that will have a point. Uh... Yeah, busy is where I live, <laughs> so I feel that, uh, Jelly. It's my own fault. I have a lot of different passions, and they pull me in a lot of different directions. 
So we're going to kind of block in now face with that taupe area. And there is a little bit down the side of her nose and it does go out under her eyes. So we're just going to block it in generally. We're not here. Let me get really close here. All right. So I'm not doing fur texture yet. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just going to block in the pattern that I observed on the cat. So I actually can fill in the eyes too. She's got kind of a bandit mask. He or she. This particular one is a she. So we'll just call our model a she too. So kind of like that. Let me get a little bit more of that. All right. And we want it to go up the forehead a little bit. So I'll be bringing in some uh, darker colors because that's kind of a, it's kind of a diamond pattern, right? See it? So you kind of want it to be a diamond pattern. So I'm going to bring it out. It kind of goes out toward her ear, down toward the bottom and down her nose. I went a little bit down too far and we just want to roughly nail it. So, and then her ears are dark also. In fact, this connects up kind of onto the ears. Looks like she has one ragged ear, which is pretty cool. So now we can, we can uh, tweak it at the same time. So we can use this color. Let's see the inside of her ears is going to be lighter, but the ears are going to go quite a bit darker. So we want to connect the ears with the forehead. We want the forehead to go up a little bit higher. We want the color around the nose and the cheeks to be a little separated. So we're going to work on that. Yeah, good luck, Twisted. So I'm going to go back to my cream color and kind of doctor this a little bit because there is a little bit of... Um, this cat's face on our model cat is different from the cat person's face. So I have to kind of figure out where to approximate. But I do want a little bit more of a roundness around the muzzle here. And then I want a little bit less area under here so I can bring in my cream. This is where you start fine tuning to get the color you want. But we're just blocking in a mask right now. And then we'll start I'm going to grab some of this darker color that we mixed. Remember we did the brown liner plus russet brown plus harvest. I'm going to grab that for the ears because our kitty has really dark ears and that's the same color that's going to start going down on the facial markings. So I have to kind of figure that out. The face is going to be the most um, intricate part. It's going to be the most difficult part. All right. So let's do our ear rims. I think this kitty does have a kind of a ragged ear on one side. And the back of the ear is going to be all dark. Because Siamese. That's the color pattern. So blocking. We are blocking in. It never looks awesome when we're blocking in, but it's the groundwork for awesome. And let's see here. My kitty, my kitty picture went away. My reference kitty. I need my reference kitty. There we go. All right, reference kitty. So I'm going to actually outline her eyes with walnut because I want the eyes to show up big time. They've got really dark rims in the, uh, photo. And once we get those placed in, she'll have more personality. <laughs> no cilantro. <laughs> Thank you for linking to the Patreon planner. I am working on uh, stuff using uh, the uh, pirate colors that we did for ReaperCon that are now out in bones. And since you guys were all asking for spots, maybe I'll do for my $2 tier. I've been sitting there kind of hemming and hawing in my $2 tier this month, trying to figure out what I want to do. Maybe I'll do how to do leopard spots because leopard spots are fun. This eye is a little harder to nail. Walnut on everything, it's my fault. It's wonderful. Walnut is wonderful. 
it it honestly walnut has been wonderful for longer than i've been with reaper guys walnut was one of the first colors reaper put out in their pro paint line and even people who did not otherwise like pro paints loved walnut so it's just one of those great colors trying to shade in the eye sockets here i feel like this is a little there we go harder to see the eye socket on that side so that's nice and dark I think she's got a dark dark lips let me check hard to see because the head is tilted down but I am gonna line around her mouth and if I decide that's a mistake later then we'll deal with it and I'm gonna use walnut because walnut enables me to do a very thin line that nonetheless is very dark Whereas my brown liner, now that I mix it with other stuff, is going to be a lot more subtle. To do a thin line, you have to thin paint down a lot. And the reason walnut works for us in this is that it keeps coverage even after you thin it. So when I thin it to the point where I have to do tiny little lines, it will still be really dark. So I'll get the contrast that I want. That's why we're using walnut. Um, I'm going to use this. I want this more of this gray color. I'm going to mix it up. I should probably do a separate puddle of this as you as you mix when you're working with mixing a lot of colors guys um you will sometimes do this you'll you'll mix a color and we'll be like oh that's going to be a lot of this model and i didn't realize it was going to be a lot of this model and i didn't mix it and that happens all the time so if you want to stop and mix a bigger portion of it you can absolutely do that so that it stops drying out and you can keep using it i'm just going to do kind of a 50 50 creamy ivory and my dark brown mixture which should give me roughly what I'm looking for here and I can decide how dark I want it mm, that's not a bad call if I make it a little darker I can utilize it um, mixing it spot mixing it with these if I need something in between she does have darker color on the side of her nose as we start blocking all this in. Also, she has a dark rim around her nose. Like her nose actually does have a dark rim around the pink. So we do want to block the nose in as well. And we may want to use walnut for that. We'll see. I probably am going to block the whole nose in in dark to start with. We can always go back to when we do the pink, we'll go back and essentially, uh, Cats have very triangular little noses. Hold on, let me make sure this looks more like a cat nose and less like a dog nose. That's better. Oh, Pro Paint is, um, it was a different base. The reason Pro Paints went out of uh, production, uh, John David were that uh, company that um, made the base for us went out of business. So you could no longer actually do those paints as they were, so. We we're already transitioning to MSP at the time, so it's just uh, the way the cookie crumbled. Some pro paint colors were really cool and made their way back. So, uh, Walnut made its way into MSP right away because it's just such a utilitarian color. Um, but some other colors were done for like ReaperCon, like Emerald, Emerald and Elderberry, and Slate, my personal favorite. Slate was a really pretty gray blue. So now we're getting, we're starting to see some personality in this face, right? We're just still only blocked in, but now we can start really fine tuning things. Um, I want to make, I definitely need some, she's got actual eyelids because she's a humanoid. So I need to put in some darker shadow there. I'm also going to start working with some of my warmer color here. I don't want her to get all grayish. Like it's okay to have some gray in here, but I need to make sure that there's some warm color too, or she'll go too gray. And that's not what we're going for. So I'm going to like line in the eye socket there. She also has a little bit more darker color on the underside of the eye. This is fun. Like this is where I really enjoy this. Um, invent as I go as far as, well, Jelly, we're, we're doing a specific kitty. So we're doing this. So my challenge has been to match some of these grayer tones here 
that are that are really just this darker color getting interrupted by white but you've got to figure out how to convey that at 28 millimeter so we're working toward this face um and then we're just what we what we start doing is blocking in colors and darks and lights and then we start refining it so i'm constantly referring to this as i'm working with the, the paint job to try to get it as close as we can get and the color selection that I've mixed is exactly the colors I think I'm going to need to do this kitty face. Oh, sorry, the overall figure? Uh, it depends, Jelly. Um, like, uh, I'm going to be working on a bust really soon that uh, I've been waiting to work on. And I've got a definite color scheme for her. Like, usually with me, uh, if I'm working on a piece that's big, that's important to me, I actually can't start it until I have, like, a solid color scheme in my head. But when I'm working on stuff for the Repro Pro Tips show, that's different. Like sometimes like with Juliana with her stripy dress, I definitely had that color scheme in, he in mind. And like with, uh, with Snack Lady, I knew that the snack that I wanted, the green and kind of the, the blue and purple uh, thing going on here with the yellow light, I knew I wanted that. Um, but with, with lately with the character models, it's like I kind of like involving you guys. Um, so right now, this is actually the one model I think I've started where I don't have a color scheme in mind for the rest of the model yet. Like, I'm thinking we're just going to figure out the fur and that we almost have to do that first and then work on the rest of the figure. Um, although right now, since the eyes are going to be blue, probably the way I would go would be dark bronze and blue, um, with some black because rogue. So that's kind of like that, but yeah, so if I'm doing my own project, I start out with a very clear color scheme right out the gate. And I usually don't even start the model until I have that color scheme in mind. I at least know my two principal colors, um, whatever, the, whatever the model is. A lot of people do that, Jelly. Derek Schubert, who has painted a lot of Reaper models and is now uh, our main, like one of our main sculptors. Um, Derek uh, keeps a little watercolor journal and does sketches and then colors them in watercolors or in acrylics. And uh, one of my people just uh, that I'm coaching for this show just sent me some stuff in, done in Photoshop to check out color schemes. It's so easy to do it. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. They do it at Paint Club on the Discord. Yeah, it's a good idea. I mean, Jelly, that's a, it's a fantastic idea. I'm just, these days I'm good enough at color that I can usually just know if two colors are going to work together. But especially, I think, when you're not, when you don't have that stable of colors in your head, um, it gets hard, right? So so now we see how we've shaded around the upper part of the eyes, guys, and now it's starting to look, uh, and we can even carry that dark color up onto the ear here. To make a kind of pattern yeah photoshop does let you play around a lot yes yeah especially if the figure as concept are on the website great point john so i'm going to do that both sides here actually because what that does is uh taking that dark line off of the eye and bringing it up to the ear even if it isn't strictly in line with what our uh, original kitty picture is looks good on this model because it emphasizes the shape of the head then you've got this broad forehead here. So it actually is going to help draw attention to the little stripy markings that we put on it. Now, let's see. Now I'm going to block in some more, like the side of the nose, which is much shorter than on the kitty that we're, that we're following. But there's still a shadow down the side of the nose on the kitty. Um, the kitty has some more brown here, actually. So this is actually a good... Um, and some of you obviously figured this out long before I did and when you mentioned the Khajiit thing. But this is actually good practice for doing a lynx because you've got a lot of gray and a lot of brown in the colors and the stripy patterns and the cream. And that's a very wildcat scheme for bobcats and lynxes. So this is actually a good, uh, a good practice for that. Now, if I look at my kitty face, one thing I do notice is that I do have a darker patch of color here. Um, I do have a, a, a more cream and tan toward the end of the nose. Um, I've got some warm color coming in on the sides here. So I'm going to start tackling all of that um, right now since I've got all these colors open. So I'm going to grab some of our brown and kind of put in a little bit of brown here. 
on the side of the nose. Remember we had a little bit of a darker color there. And if I need to, I can grab some cream and uh, kind of blend that in a little bit, make it a little less strong. So put kind of little spots of color on either side. You can work them into the mask because they actually uh, do kind of connect with the lower part of the mask. Uh, there may be paint on my phone. Who cares? It's glass. It'll rub off. <laughs> there is paint on everything in my house. Even Kiri probably has paint. I think Ron was going to play D&D &D and then his, he just got, he has a schedule that gets in the way. I heard he was one of the first people that, that they wanted to play, but that he just didn't have, he wasn't able to free up time on those nights of the week or that night of the week. Besides, then Ron might actually have to like something other than second edition, guys. <laughs> or first edition. Hee <laughs> hee. All right, so I'm going to get that little spot kind of worked in. If you don't want it to be really blobby, you kind of want to work it in. Um, that one goes up here, so I'm going to get this up here. I'm going to take a look at it again. Always having a photo reference and referring back to your photo reference. You can change things if you want to on the photo reference, but um, then just make sure it's intentional and, and uh, may, do it consistently because the uh, animal color patterns usually can be pretty symmetrical on both sides. And I lost a little bit of my white going up upside the nose. So I'm going to pick that back up. But yeah, you saw what a train wreck it kind of started out looking like. Like this kitty did not look good for the first couple colors. But now, now that we're getting the, the pattern down, now we're starting to get it. And her face is symmetrical on both sides. Got to have that little uh, little gray blob on both sides. I think it could be a little rounder here. Want her muscle to look still kind of round from the front. She almost looks like a little gray cougar at this point, which I love because I had, I had an Abyssinian um, and they look like tiny mountain lions. <laughs> My first kitty was an Abyssinian. All right, I'm going to actually put in some darker brown here right around the eyes and stuff because we're going to be doing some markings there. And I want to mark kind of how far down it comes. It comes kind of to the top of the nose. I want to maybe emphasize that shadow there. Helps to give her a little bit to emphasize her face. See it? And I do want... I do want... I'm looking at her, looking at her face here. I'm going to lighten that area. Do I want to put the white in now? I think I want to bring in some of my warmer browns. So warmer browns. Right around here. I may uh, extend them a little bit just to give her more striking markings. Give her a little bit darker fur out here. And I'm going to bring in some of my warmer brown. So see how, how as we emphasize the markings in the light and dark areas, um, the pattern starts to come out, right? So let's grab some of our light tan here, this really warm color. I want to get some more of this in here. I'm going to mix it a little bit. I do this a lot. I do like just if I need a little spot blend between two colors, I'll just grab both and put it up on the palette this way. And... Uh, Put it somewhere I need it. I want a little bit of a little bit of a brown tip to her nose. I want to bring in some of these warm colors now. And yeah, you're just really layering at this point. What you're doing, John? John's in, got it in one. It's like you're layering different blobs of color, right, onto the face in the place in the places where you want them. And from here is where you start using fur texture. Actually, using little brush strokes. 
to um, blend in everything together. And make it look like fur. But you start out with just locating where your colors all need to be. She looks pretty. Look at that beautiful, look at the beautiful coloring on her face. I really like it. Now I'm going to give her some warm cream under her throat. Here's where I think I've, I've got enough of a grasp now on her colors that I think I can extrapolate at this point. Where I've got her face basically marked in. So now I can begin, um, maybe I can just uh, kind of free, just go kind of like away from the photo reference for a bit and uh, mark up some of the rest of this fur. Because I need to get the cheeks and I want to get kind of a little bit of a grayish tone around the mouth so that I can bring in the pure white. But this is how, when you've got a complex pattern on an animal, this is, this is how I tackle it. Bring in a little bit, a little bit of gray, a little bit of shading. The thing about fur texture, like there is back here on her cheeks, there she there isn't any of this in our reference kitty, so we have to kind of figure it out. Um, but you want to put some darker color in there so that you can come in with a lighter color and and uh, make these little bits of fur kind of stand out. And that may require painting in a darker color first. But I'm not coloring it all in so much that I lose where I want my lights. So I just want some shadows so I can come back and emphasize parts. And I'm going to put this um, darker color also in the ears because again, I want, there's some fur texture here. So I'm going to come back in with some color to emphasize it, which means I need to shade it. Alrighty, so now let's get some of this highlighting in here. And I still need to make some stripes and I still need to outline her eyes really in really light color. Which works just great with our eyelids. Stripes will be the absolute last thing I do. Um, Usually that is the case. If you're doing stripes or spots, they should be the last thing you do on the animal. Kind of think of them like doing tattoos on humans. You want to have everything else laid out before you start working those in. Let's get in this uh, creamy ivory. Come back. And now if I'm painting, I'm going to use an actual brush stroke, which means I may actually need to uh, thin my paint a little bit more. If I want little thin fur lines, I need my paint to be pretty thin. So I'm thinning down my base color again. To try to bring this fur texture up. Actually, I think I'm gonna do some straight up creamy ivory too. So I'm gonna mix up some of that. Blending is all paint consistency and brush stroke, Dragon. It's all using thinner paint, learning to control it, and using an appropriate brush stroke to get blends. You can also do wet on wet blending, which is smooshing two colors together while they're wet. You can do that to set up a blend and then refine it with layering. It's what Marika Reimer does, or used to. I haven't touched base with Marika's paint, job, paint style in a while. She may have changed. A lot of us do evolve our paint styles as we uh, continue to paint. I never used to wet blend and I do it all the time now. Let's see, we're gonna bring up our white here. So if I'm, as I'm painting these areas now, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing the, the brush stroke in the direction the fur is growing. 
I'm going to be very conscious of doing that at this stage. Before this, I didn't care about it. Now I care. Because making those little like lines, inroads, into um, other colors of the fur is what is going to give us the effects we want. The effect of the fur. It's going to stop being blocky and start being blended in. And we're not actually blending like tremendously. All right. But just suggesting the fur growth is going to help blend, give the blended appearance here. So let's put our little uh, dashes above the eyes. It's a key component of these tabby color patterns. You always got to break down the, the components also. You always have, and it's not going to be as light, but you always have these eyebrows, these little eyebrows here. And in this, in this case, they're darker. In some cat patterns, they're lighter. So you've got a light and a dark, and then you've got a dark band all over, down the middle of the head. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to keep that in mind, right? So we'll start with those two lighter marks. Now we're going to grab some of our, um, our brown liner mixed with uh, russet brown and harvest brown. And we're going to use the, remember, there's a dark one right next to that. So we come in and we do the dark one. Then there's going to be another light one followed by another dark one. And we actually have the light one kind of already in there. Happily, the dark one works right into our dark ear edge. So I'm going to do that. Light and then dark. Dark up the ear. Now we've got a little tabby pattern. And remember to simplify. You're not going to be able to do like tiny details like you see on a cat because this is so much smaller. So I'm going to just do a little bit of dark in the middle here to refine those little light eyebrows. We're getting our tabby, our, our tabby-ish face going on now. Chia, at this point, all I'm doing is is paint by number. I'm uh, I'm just copying my source, like. Thank you for the compliment, but I am just trying to copy our kitty. Um, so it's just, at this point, it's just paint what you see, right? Note, I haven't put these like light streaks in yet, but I need to. And the really light underneath the eye. It's going to be a little different here because this kitty, her, her um, markings go right up from the bridge of the nose over the eye, but she doesn't have an eyelid like this model does because this model is humanoid. So I'm compromising on that right now. I'm not certain how I'm going to translate it. Um, but let's get some more white. Let's get some actual pure white on kitty and see how that looks. Hey, Sierra. Sierra, thank you for the resub. Seven months, awesome. Yeah, this is our kitty pattern. Everybody decided they wanted Siamese and they wanted a tabby point, so we decided to see if we could do it on a model this small. Um, and our, our kitty is uh, coming along. That's what I'll say. But she, uh, we pretty much blocked in her fur colors, and now we're finally getting down to like doing the tab, some of the tabby markings. Now I need some warmer brown up here to go up toward the ears. So I'm still doing some blocking in where I want... Um, warmer color and I think I want some ivory bits up here so now I'm kind of extrapolating from uh, doing some extra little little details because this kitty has you can see some extra little bits up here now we can't get this small on this model because this model is so small it can't we can't get this fine but we can kind of take in the spirit of this and uh, add some lighter dashes in the dark fur. And then use that to work up into the top of the head to blend in some of this fur. Now this kitty actually has like more of a, a triangle. This, this kitty has like a wider ear shape. So we don't get this... Um, we don't get this triangle effect we've got. Like in the real kitty, if the, if the ears were more on top of the head here, we'd get this little triangle of warm fur going up into the ears. But because this kitty has a broader, like her ears are laying back and down more, we don't get that as much. We're, we've got a lot more pale color up here. Now there is dark color here on top of the head. You can see it kind of creeping up. It tends to be on the back of the head in Siamese. 
So what we'll do is we'll keep this pale patch up here, but we're going to start bringing in some darker color here. And I am going to be using a brush stroke that goes in the direction the fur grows at this point. I'm going to bring down this a bit, add around the ears. I'm going to grab my creamy ivory and start mixing this together up here to get a bit of the pattern kind of mixed in. Could also, if we wanted to, use our warm brown. And this is where we could just start kind of ex extrapolating just kind of from fantasy. We could put a warm brown stripe down in the middle of her head and have it connecting back up if we wanted to. Or we could put more warm brown around her ears if we wanted more of that color to uh, more of a wildcat face. And then we can come back in and we can bring up this cream color again. But right now, I think I want to shade the back of her head a bit and underneath the ears with this um, gray brown. And then we'll bring the color back up. Now I'm using mixtures here and there of warmer and cooler um, tans and creams. I do want to bring up the dark on the underside of these ears and a bit more I think and I want to blend it into the head a little bit more. So here since we don't have any photo reference we can go pretty um, freeform. If we decide we want more dark blended into her mane back here we can. And that lets us um, make the back of the head more interesting than just having it all cream colored. We do have that little bit of dark back there, so we can grab our shadow color and get all the way down around the armor. So now we're, now we're rocking. It took us a little while. We had to be cautious when we were setting up our pattern. But once we've got our pattern well underway, then we can start booking it. And we can start going, okay, now I know kind of where I'm going. I know what colors I'm using. I think I'm just going to go for it and make it look good. So dark ears. And that's a pretty good, I think, back of the head look for her. She really does look like a little lynx. I like it. I like that she looks like a lynx. I like bobcats and lynxes. I've never tried to paint one in miniature. All right, we're going to darken out the ear here. Make her ears darker because I like that look. And a Siamese would have that look. Now, we did lose a lot of the light on the top of the head, so we will come back with to get that. But first, I want to tackle the nose and eyes. I'm going to get some of my white and my creamy ivory. I'm kind of doing a mix of those. And I am going to do little tiny strokes in the direction that fur would grow. I'm going to try to kind of make an interrupted line. So when I say interrupted line, I mean if you did a, a stripe of one color and a stripe of another color next to each other. To do an interrupted line would be to go directly across these. This is how you blend. You start to get a fuzzy effect by going across the boundary. It's not as much of a straight up line anymore. That's what we're doing with the fur, is we want that slight fade, that little bit of blend that comes from interrupting that line. So we started out with very, very um, linear blocks of color. And now as we come back in, we're doing that kind of um, hair direction stroke to get those fuzzed out. She's getting there. She's not amazing yet. She'll get there. There is a lot more that I can do. And it, pretty much how much you refine is up to you. Um, but I want her to be as, uh, as fine-tuned as I can to get the color pattern to translate, so. I'm 
going to put that stark white around her eyes, which is really going to make them pop out because she has such a dark rim around them. Let me get the other side. Double check myself on that. That's coming along, starting to get there. She's getting there. She's she's uh we have so much left to do, guys. <laughs> we have to lighten up her cheeks and her muzzle and her chin. We'll get there. Kiri might have a dog emergency going on though. So we're almost to eleven. So we may have to pick this up again tomorrow. Um, do we have a raid like uh just in case Kiri has a moment in the next minute, <laughs> John? <laughs> I'll start looking right now. Yeah, just in case. I noticed her. She's getting a bit uncomfortable. So it's almost 11, so it's not too bad if we have to stop two minutes early. I can make up the time on a different day. But uh, yeah, guys, so pretty much taking in my white, and now I'm going to start using the fur texture and lightening up all of the places that our kitty in the picture has very much lighter fur, including her little chin. And round out that chin and make it look fluffy. Aw. She's getting there. You're right. She's getting there. We got to make her cheeks come up. Um, we want to bring some more light into the top of her head. We'll do a lot of this with creamy ivory and white. And I will go and block in her eyes in white maybe. Because, well, maybe we'll leave them dark for now. Yeah, she looks like a little lynx, doesn't she, Julie? Yeah. I like her a lot. Now I want to paint a lynx. Somebody quick sculpt a lynx bust. But yeah, so there's our there's our kitty and there's our kitty. Kitty, kitty. So there's still some adjustments that I could do. I've lost a bit of the dark around the face. Um, and that's totally something that's easy easy to fix. And it, I can fine tune that. Um, thanks, Moby. No, not corny at all. The, the thing is, okay, let me, since Julie's here in the chat, let me just say, Julie Guthrie knows how to sculpt cat faces and dog faces and wolf faces. Julie knows animals. When Julie sculpts a face like this, she's going to be drawing on nature to do it. And she's going to make it look, you know, she, she her sculpt will not be corny, which means that your paint job won't be corny if you just pay a little bit of attention. Like, because Julie is sculpting a naturally, you know, cat, a good cat face, uh, she helps. The, the sculpt totally helps you um, not have something look corny. And, you know, there's also, you know, the paint job obviously does contribute. And I do love natural. I love things that look more naturalistic. So for me, uh, it's against my nature to go corny on a model like this. I'm sure you could paint this model corny if you wanted to. But... I want it to look like a little lynx now. I'm like, I'm not going to stop until this looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, with a little human element in it. Yeah, exactly. Because the eye shape, right, Julie, is different. And the nose quite isn't as the same length. Um, but in general, uh, you do a great job of, of referencing nature and making these sculpts really speak for themselves. So, Ah, uh, has a Lynx sidekick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bombshell's good with the animal stuff. Um, yeah, you could also use this technique for raccoon fur. You've absolutely got it, Rax, because uh, you, you could get the same kind of mixture of browns and grays. Like, this is a good natural animal color scheme, right? Um, and coons, of course, have that dark mask. But then on the other parts of the coon face, you could use this sort of thing. So, definitely. Yeah, so this is this is a tribute to Julie sculpting as much as it is to my painting. The fact that the cat is going to look like serious and and like you know feral and cool, um, but she's a rogue. Like she should be like scary, right? So <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. All right, John, we have a raid. Ron, John's still looking. We'll let John look. I'm gonna. No, I, I got it. You got it. All <laughs> right, I wasn't yeah. sure you had disappeared. Um, Are you ready? ready? Yeah, so let's do that. Let's tomorrow, guys. We'll continue with the fur, and I'm gonna lighten up some areas here, and we'll we'll fine tune the face until it looks amazing, and then we'll move on to carrying that stuff onto the rest rest of the fur, which won't take nearly as much effort because there are just small parts of it. Um, all right, 
Uh, you guys have a fantastic day. Oh, Collins asked me to to recap what we have done at the end of each stream to make it easier, to probably for tags for YouTube and stuff. So today we showed how to how to take a photo reference of a of a cat and adapt it by choosing colors and blocking in patterns onto the face of our little cat girl. Um, and we'll continue that tomorrow. All right, guys. <laughs> Have a fantastic day, and uh, I'm going to take Kiri outside, and y'all, I'll, I'll see you later for my stream on my channel. Don't forget, we d d today. All right? See you later. Bye-bye. Awesome. All right, guys. Um, uh, today's Proctor show got canceled. Uh, I'm about to post it on social media. Uh, he had some work stuff come up, so uh, be paying attention to that, and uh, we'll see you later. Um, I'm about to post it on social, so you won't forget, but just don't remember anybody else in there. But say hi to... Uh, Maha room for us. So I have the raid started right now. We have about eight seconds and then we'll be heading on over there. Uh, she's painting some stuff for some uh, advent calendars and all that stuff. So have a good night, everybody. And I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs>